It was in 1951, October 26, when Terrio Morse's Unknown World was released in the United States, capitalising seemingly or inspired by the prospective and plausible apocalyptic consequences of the atomic age, it was produced by Irving A. Block and Jack Rabin, independent of a major American film studio. An American novelist and screenwriter named Millard Kaufman penned the film's script and Terry O. Morse was apparently hired to direct the production. Shot by Alan G. Siegler and Henry Freulich, Unknown World's experience makes plausible that its players are below the Earth's surface, although one doesn't share in any evident or overt claustrophobia. Nevertheless, it is an impressive creative illusion, considering its lack of significant funding. Unknown World is fundamentally, I think, a film which wants to acknowledge the horrifying, traumatic realities of nuclear weapons, and yet insists that we ought to cherish what we have, those of us who have minuscule influence over the gigantic nuclear nation-states. It is disinterested in true utopianism. The journey to the centre of the Earth turns up no pellucidar, but a poisoned, noxious environment, and one which is swiftly destroyed and collapses, possibly with them as the cause, the crew that is, although also believably a narrative convenience. The surviving crew discover a tropical island upon their return to the surface and look upon it with panting relief. Let's appreciate what we have while it lasts. The organiser of the expedition, Dr. Jeremiah Morley, portrayed by the apparently uncredited, blacklisted, Victor Killian, chooses to stay behind, ready to be consumed by the destruction of, an, of a subterranean volcano, not entering the cyclotram with the rest of the remaining crew. Killian was tragically murdered by burglars in his Hollywood apartment in March 1979. It's absolutely tragic. I was kind of really aghast reading that on his Wikipedia page. Truly. Ugly world. Dr. Morley's deductive nihilism is hard to shake from a viewer after the film announces its end, and I wonder if the filmmakers intended it this way. While the world did not end during the 1950s, and not necessarily the Cold War either, the threat has never disappeared, and now nuclear powers again, and never still, threaten their weapons of war of inevitable Armageddons for reasons most are genuinely unsure. People watch television or internet broadcasts where commentators speculate on the thought processes of world leaders. Are there any thought processes to observe, or merely survival-driven impulses? And when invoking, when considering survival, this can also mean, especially when one is a global superpower, doing what it takes to feel as though one will win. Some superpowers claim belief in a greater good that they would be responsible for, and some consumers begrudgingly agree, although same superpowers could provocatively manipulate a situation so that others might be forcefully put down, because indeed, why share the wealth now? But Unknown World is to be enjoyed as a quaint 1950s era American science fiction genre picture, and it can be effective at demonstrating a scientific voyage doubling as a dangerous, thrilling adventure. It is marginally educational, politically inspired, although without a significant claim to originality with this facet. It is a reasonably fun episode, although not of extreme artistic proficiency and hardly narratively revelatory. Unknown World is to be mildly admired for its trying ambitions, a stern warning of humankind's cataclysmic capacity for death in the post-war 20th century and beyond, while a pulpy escapist trip down through the layers of the Earth's crust at the same time. An inoffensive, overall likeable number.